I am Rear Admiral Set Kwekuba Amwama, the 17th Chief of the Naval Staff. And today I am excited. I feel highly honored to lead and present the Ghana Navy as it celebrates 60 years of naval excellence. As Chief of Naval Staff, I am responsible to the Chief of Defense Staff through to the Minister for Defense, to the Commander-in-Chief and President of the Republic for the overall command and control of the Ghana Navy, as well as providing strategic leadership, direction and guidance to the Ghana Navy. In addition, I am also responsible for the formulation of operational, administrative, logistics, technical, training and welfare policies for the guidance of the personnel of the Ghana Navy. Last but not the least, I'm also responsible for the strategic planning for the future development and expansion of the Navy, including new acquisitions. Now, the Navy, the mandates of the Navy, as it was when it was established, and is still today, is to protect and defend the maritime territorial integrity of Ghana, deter any form of aggression, and maintain total freedom at sea, which is critical for Ghana's maritime security and economic prosperity, especially in the era of the blue economy. In summary, I can say that the Navy's mandates are in three areas. First is the war fighting role in defense of the maritime frontage of Ghana. Second is also for policing, constabulary and law enforcement roles to curb uh, oceans of crimes. And thirdly, diplomatic roles to show the flag of Ghana to the international community. And in this area, we are also undertaking search and rescue operation and non-combat evacuation of Ghanaian nationals who are held in various situations in other countries. So these are, in summary, the mandate of the Navy. Sixty years in the life of any organization is a key milestone worth celebrating in a grand style. We in the Navy consider our 60 years anniversary as a new beginning. And so we want to use the occasion of the Diamond Jubilee to highlight the very major contributions that the Navy has played in the development of the nation for the past 60 years. In the past, the Ghana Navy has been hosting a biennial conference on Coastal and Maritime Surveillance Africa, CAMSA, exhibition and conference. Now, as part of the new beginning, we, in partnership with Great Minds Events,
planning and organizing entity are putting together for the first time the International Maritime Defense Exhibition and Conference in Accra from 23rd to 25th. That will be the maiden edition of that conference. At this conference, we expect the aggregation or congregation of a large number of maritime stakeholders, both locally and internationally, as well as chiefs of the navies from the sub-region and also from other international countries to come and discuss principal issues facing the maritime security of Africa and in particular the Gulf of Guinea. And so at this conference we hope to be discussing and having a conversation about modern technological innovations curbing the illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing, which is dominating our maritime domain. We hope to have a conversation on information sharing and capacity building. We also want to talk about cyber and electronic uh, warfare. And so we have the opportunity for participants and attendees to visit the stands and exhibition mounted by major defense and maritime industry to showcase modern and advanced technology in maritime surveillance, defense, command and control, and whole lot of uh, technologies to be displayed during this conference. For me, the key initiative in the entire Gulf of Guinea region that will address the maritime security issues is the Yaoundé Code of Conduct and its related ECOWAS Integrated Maritime Strategy. As you know, the Gulf of Guinea is very rich in many resources, hydrocarbons, various species of fishes, and mineral resources which should actually help to uplift the socio-economic development of the sub-region. But at the same time, this region is plagued by a plethora of threats. We are talking about piracy, armed robbery at sea, illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing, illegal smuggling of fuel. I've talked about piracy, arm robbery, drugs smuggling, and a whole lot of maritime crimes. These crimes are transnational in nature, and no country has the wherewithal to fight these crimes. And so what the Yaoundé Code of Conduct and the ECOWAS Integrated Maritime Strategy seeks to do is to pull the resources of these nations in a coordinated manner, share information, conduct operations in a coordinated fashion so that we can address 
the challenges of the Gulf of Guinea. That is not the only initiative. Uh, ongoing, there is the annual exercise of Bangami Express, which is led by the United States Navy, which brings all the navies together. The 10th iteration of this exercise will be held next year, March 2020. And I'm very pleased to announce that Ghana Navy has graciously offered to host the next exercise Obangami Express in Accra. There are other initiatives by also the French Navy, which also brings the navies together in an exercise which is named NEMO. We also have collaboration with partners from Germany, Dutch Navy, Portuguese Navy, Italian Navy, and the Spanish uh, Navy. And so there are a lot of initiatives in the sub-region to curb the increasing maritime threats. Okay. Okay. As I said earlier, the implementation of the ECOWAS Integrated Maritime Strategy holds the key to the success of any initiative or effort to curb the illegalities at sea. Now, in 2015, the pilot zone was operationalized with a headquarters in Benin, and that has Nigeria, Benin, Togo, and Burkina Faso. Now, currently, there's also established a headquarters for Zone F in Ghana, which is yet to be operationalized with the deployment of international officers from the navies of Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, Guinea, and uh, Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso has not a navy, but then they are providing air asset in support of the operations. The last zone in the ECOWAS sub-region is Zone E, which is being established in Cape Verde, and it will include Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, Mali, and of course, uh, Cape Verde. Now, when all these three zones are operationalized, then the region would be able to coordinate very well through information sharing and also coordinated operation. There are challenges. For instance, most countries in the sub-region have low level of maritime domain awareness. There are also weak legal and judicial systems to prosecute criminals who are arrested. There are weak infrastructures and poor funding. Now, as the population of the countries in West Africa begin to be sensitized to see the importance of the sea and then the resources therein, maybe more resources would be channeled towards resourcing the maritime security agencies and then we can see an improvement in the level of coordination and operations in the navies of the sub-region.